Oh my gosh, I'm so excited for today's episode because not only we're we talking about an amazing topic, but we are celebrating something so epic with this podcast community. I literally can't even handle it. We have hit over 500,000 downloads on the podcast. <laughs> what? 500,000. Like, I literally can't even believe it. It's mind blowing to me. Like I can't even conceptualize that number to be honest with you, but it is so incredible. And I am just so grateful that people actually listen to this every week. Like when I start, I'm like, all right, like maybe someone will listen. And to think that like right now you're on a walk or you're driving in your car or you're doing some errands or you're cooking, like whatever you're doing and I'm in your ears right now listening like it's such an intimate platform that like I get to be with you as you're doing things during the day and you get to learn and grow and I get to bring you on this journey with me throughout my pregnancy and postpartum just like all the things I think it's so freaking cool and I'm so grateful for it and the only reason literally the only reason why this podcast is growing and now getting into so many more people's I was gonna say hands but ears because like that's what that's obviously the whole plan is to make sure that we are educating as many women as possible on these topics is because of you. It's because you share this with your friends, you review the podcast, you subscribe to it, you send it to them. You're like, oh my God, check this episode out. You have to listen to this. You talk about it with your friends at dinner. Like some of you have messaged me be like, hey, we were just talking about a podcast episode you're recording um, at dinner. I was like, what? That's so cool. I love it so much. And the only reason is because of you that this is growing. So I want to thank you so much for getting us this far and we are just getting started baby we are going all the way with this but we are doing an epic giveaway and there are going to be five winners because it's 500,000 downloads so I want to choose five of you um I want you to head to my Instagram that's where all the details are I'll put my Instagram handle in the show notes in case you aren't already connected with me over there You'll see the post. It's going to be posted today so that you can enter to win. Um, and again, five of you are going to win. Some of you will win a one-on-one call. Some of you are going to win the Mind Your Hormones Method course, my Supplement Masterclass. Like all these different things are going to be available for you because I just love this community so much. I love that you are interested in this and that you are doing the damn thing with me. So go head over to Instagram for all the details to enter to win. Um, and we're going to announce the winner next week. So if you're listening to us in real time, so I'm super, super excited. And if you're not listening to us in real time, I'm still really, really grateful for you. And I'm so happy that you're here. Um, okay. So with that being said, let's get into today's topic, which I know you're going to love because whenever I talk about progesterone on this podcast, it's like, one of the ones that you listen to the most. So I'm like, all right, let's do another podcast episode on this because clearly it's something that she wants to learn more about. So what we're talking about are four signs that your progesterone levels are starting to balance out. So we have other episodes about signs that your progesterone levels are low, how to actually begin healing your progesterone levels. Like we'll put all those episodes in the um, show notes. They're some of our top listened to episodes. If you haven't listened to them yet, definitely check them out. They're really awesome. But today we're talking specifically about signs that you might be experiencing in your body if you know that you're moving in the right direction with changes that you're making specifically to your progesterone levels. And let me give you a little bit of context on this. So I got this question from a client who's in the Mind Your Hormones method. She's in the coaching portion. When you you could purchase the Mind Your Hormones method in two different ways. You could get just the course only. You go through it on your own, self-paced. You're just like, I'm doing it on my own. I'm good, Corinne. I got this. You're doing it. Then you could also join with six months of group coaching from me. They used to be via Zoom calls, but since becoming a mom, I'm like, people don't need more shit on their calendars. People don't necessarily need to be on Zoom all the time. So we do it via a Voxer broadcast channel, which is like WhatsApp. And so the women post their questions or whatever they want support on in the Facebook group. I answer it then during the week in our Voxer broadcast chat, and they plug in and listen to the response literally whenever it's convenient for them on the go, whenever they want. So they don't have to put another calendar call on their calendar. It's just like literally coaching on the go to fit every season of your life, which I'm obsessed with the shift. I love it. Anyway, she asked me this question. She said, I know it could take some time, but are we moving in the right direction? Like what are some key indicators that your progesterone levels are balancing out? Um, She was telling me that her periods are now 90% pain-free. Let's freaking go, which is nothing like the pain she used to experience. She does still have a day of spotting before her full flow, um, but she wanted to know like what this means. Okay. Now that my, see that my period is uh, 90% pain-free, I am still seeing some spotting. Like, 
Am I moving in the right direction? Okay, spoiler alert, it means things are working. If you're noticing that you're having less pain, things are working, okay? Um, so this is where this question came from. And I'm like, this is such a good question. Let's bring it to the podcast. So four signs that your progesterone levels are bouncing out. So that's essentially what she was asking. What are some signs my progesterone levels are bouncing out? Here are some four signs you could you could look at. Number one, which is what we just talked about, you have less pain and less cramping during your period. If you're doing things that are, a, if you have pain during your period, right? Anywhere from a scale of one to 10, if you have anything from a three or above, there's something going on that we need to heal, we need to address. It should just feel a little bit uncomfortable and like heaviness sometimes during your period, but you shouldn't feel any pain, okay? Um, if you are making strategic changes that are actually supporting your root cause and healing what's actually going on, you're going to be noticing less cramping and less pain during your period if you're moving in the right direction. And this you should notice within like two cycles. You really should notice it rather quickly if you are doing what's actually like a targeted strategy to help support yourself. Like this client that we're talking about in the Mind to Hormones Method, she joined mm, a month and a half ago, I want to say, uh, tops two months, tops two months ago. Um, it's like, to, what is time, especially with being postpartum, being a mom, I'm like, how is my baby almost four months old already? What is going on? Um, so tops two months ago, and she's already, seen, no, already noticing her periods are 90% pain-free. That is the rate at which you will heal if you're doing things that are actually solving the problem. Okay. So you're going to notice less pain during your period. That's always a good sign, but that's also a sign that you are um, progesterone levels are balancing out. I'm going to talk about why after I list these four signs. Okay. So that's number one, less cramping during your period. Number two, and again, eventually we want to get to no cramping during your period, but if signs that you're moving in the right direction is that you're noticing it's getting less and less and less. Um, the second one is less PMS and mood swings during your period, AKA you're not feeling like you want to blow up on anyone that crosses your path. You want, you have no patience. You're like, I'm done with this. I have zero patience. I'm getting my period. I'm so on edge. I'm so agitated. Like none of that, that is not normal. You're going to feel different. You're going to have different levels of energy and your moods can be a little bit different. You're just focused on different things in your luteal phase, but mood swings and PMS in general, that is just a, a physical sign that you have low progesterone levels. So if you're noticing that that's improving, you're like, oh, I have less PMS. I wasn't as on edge. I'm feeling less mood swing. I'm feeling less all over the place before my period. That's a sign that your progesterone levels are balancing out. Number three is you have fewer days of spotting before your full flow. Another one-on-one uh, -on -one client specifically just came to mind when I'm thinking about this. When we started working together, she would spot for about a week before her full flow. So essentially she's bleeding for like two months out of two, two months, sorry, two weeks out of the month, which is wild and not normal. And that's also not your period, right? The spotting is not your period. You don't start day one of your cycle until your actual full flow begins. That's when you start tracking it. The spotting happens because progesterone, estrogen builds up your uterine lining and progesterone holds onto it. And if you don't have enough progesterone present from either not ovulating or not, not, not properly supporting yourself in your luteal phase, then you don't have the hormone to hold on to that uterine lining. So it's going to start dripping out, dripping out, dripping out before your actual period comes. And that's what that spotting happens. She used to have a week of it. Now she has no spotting at all. But again, it didn't, it didn't go from seven days of spotting to no spotting. It went from seven days of spotting. And then the next cycle, she was like, oh my God, I only had about like five days of spotting. And then she's like, wow, I only spotted for like three days. And then she was like, I didn't spot at all. So it's, you're going to progressively see that it's getting better and better and better. You never go from zero to a hundred when it comes to your hormones, you're going to notice a progression with it. So you're having fewer days of spotting before your full flow. Eventually it will go to no spotting before your full flow. Okay. Um, that's number, whatever was that? That was number three. Number four is you are experiencing less clotting during your period. When you're bleeding, if you're noticing clots that are bigger than one inch, um, and you see this more so if you're using a cup or a disc, which is another reason why I recommend using like the Diva Cup or the Cora Disc. The Cora Disc, I personally like the disc better. Um, I haven't used it in so long because I was pregnant, I'm postpartum, I'm breastfeeding, I have not gotten my cycle back yet. Um, it usually it takes longer when you're breastfeeding, that's a whole other topic, but anyway. I personally preferred the disc because I feel like it's sealed more. I experienced, I didn't experience leaking like I did with the cup. Uh, the cup sits like at the base of your vaginal canal and the disc sits like up higher. Um, I just like that better. But anyway, that's when you could really see the consistency of your flow because you will actually be able to see when you like take the disc or the cup out and you pour it into the toilet bowl, you'll be able to see, oh, is it clotting? What color is it? What consistency is it? And it's so important to have that information because your cycle is your fifth vital sign. So the sign 
signs that you're getting during your period, that's letting you know what's actually happening, what hormones are out of whack, what we need to do to support ourselves. So if you have clots that are one inch or bigger, that's letting you know you have some excess estrogen. So if you're noticing that that's getting better, you're having less clots, your period is more of like a cranberry color. It's more seamless. It's more like flowy. It doesn't have those clots in it. That's a sign that your progesterone levels are improving. And the reason why is that when you do have cramps and PMS and spotting and periods that are heavy with a lot of clots and your period is longer than seven days, that's letting you know that you have too much estrogen in relation to your progesterone levels. And that's the most important part in relation to, because you might not have most of the time, I would say probably 90% of the time on blood work, you're not going to show that you have high estrogen levels. And the reason is because you might not have high estrogen when it comes to just the optimal or normal range of estrogen, but based off of how low your progesterone levels are, your estrogen can be too high in relation to that progesterone because they work yin and yang, they work together. Again, estrogen builds up that uterine lining, um, progesterone will thin it out and it holds onto it. Estrogen will um, promote like breast cancer. Progesterone helps reduce it. Like they work like yin and yang. We need estrogen. Though. Like estrogen should not be demonized. It's really, really important. We need it, but they work like yin and yang. So you want them to be balanced out. Um, now, eventually when you're doing things that are going to help support yourself, your progesterone levels are going to, uh, are going to balance out. You're not going to experience this PMS, the cramps, the mood swings, the acne, like all these things that you could be experiencing. That's the actual goal, especially if you're trying to conceive because progesterone is the hormone that's needed to hold on to that uterine lining that like we talked about. If you don't have sufficient progesterone levels to hold on to that uterine lining, it's not going to be able to hold on to and nourish a pregnancy. And progesterone is a level, is the hormone that continues to build up and double and triple and quadruple or whatever as you are pregnant. So it's really, really super important that you have that uterine lining intact so the egg can attach, can live and grow and turn into your beautiful little baby. Um, so that is what's actually going on. If you are, those are some signs you could be experiencing. If you are noticing your progesterone levels are moving in the right direction, um, that's the goal. Okay. Now, if you're experiencing some of these symptoms, if you're like, well, Corinne, I do have pain or I do have PMS or I do have clots or my period is longer than seven days, or I am experiencing the mood swings, the breast tenderness, the acne, the migraines, whatever it is, there's two things that could be going on. Number one is that you're not regularly ovulating. So that means you're not regularly producing progesterone. Um, that's a major cause of it. If you're not ovulating or you're not regularly ovulating, then you're not producing a progesterone. You're going to experience these signs because again, progesterone is produced by ovulation. Ovulating is how we actually produce the hormone progesterone. So if that's not happening, you're going to experience these symptoms. So number one is to make sure that you're actually ovulating. Um, number two is that you're ovulating, you're producing progesterone, but you're lowering those progesterone levels that you actually did make by not properly shifting the way that you're eating and working out and living your life in your luteal phase, the 10 to 14 days before your period. I talk about this a ton on the podcast because it's so important. So your action steps for this, if you are still experiencing any of these symptoms and you know that you have some low progesterone levels is number one, track your basal body temperature and ideally your cervical mucus as well to see if you're ovulating. Uh, cervical mucus will let you know you're approaching ovulation. BBT, your basal body temperature actually confirms ovulation. Head to episode 123. We'll link it in the show notes of the podcast. It teaches you how to track the cervical mucus and this basal body temperature um, because you it, it's, it's vital. And if you're like, holy shit, I'm not ovulating, that's where the mind to hormones method comes in, okay? Because we need to get to the root of that. We have to know, what we, need, we need to be ovulating whether you wanna get pregnant or not. Ovulation is required for your overall health and wellness. Again, ovulation, your cycle in general is a fifth vital sign. It's just as important as your blood pressure, your breathing rate, your heart rate, and your body temperature. If you had a fever, you wouldn't ignore it. If you had high blood pressure, you wouldn't ignore it. If you couldn't breathe, you wouldn't ignore it. So if you're not ovulating, we can't ignore it, okay? It's so extremely important because again, it produces progesterone. We need progesterone for healthy bones, for reducing our risk of heart disease and osteoporosis and endometrial cancer and all these things and our mood, our hair, skin, nails, and all the things, okay? So if you know that you're not regularly ovulating, check out the information on the Mind Your Hormones Method. I mean, it is the way to go, okay? So that's number one. Number two is, um, so that's your action step number one, track your basal by temperature, see if you're ovulating. If you're not, head to the Mind Your Hormones Method if it's aligned for you, okay? Number two is no caffeine or high intensity exercise in your luteal phase. I mean, am I a broken record? Yes, I am. And I will continue talking about this until the end of time because that's how important it is. And that's how much of a difference it's gonna make in your progesterone levels. If you are ovulating, but you're having these symptoms, we need to more optimally 
um, support those progesterone levels in your luteal phase. If you are doing high intensity exercise, you are further increasing an already high, low resting cortisol level that you have in your luteal phase. Those 10 to 14 days before your period, your resting cortisol level is naturally higher. So if you're doing things that are going to continuously jack it up even higher and higher and higher, it's going to lower your progesterone levels. Why? Because when your body needs to continuously produce cortisol, it uses progesterone to produce more cortisol. So the higher your, your cortisol levels are, the more your body is robbing you of progesterone to make more cortisol. Higher cortisol, lower progesterone. We don't want that. Same thing goes for with caffeine. Not only is that going to impact your cortisol levels, but it's also going to impact your blood sugar regulation. And your blood sugar is more naturally dysregulated because of where your hormone levels are at in your luteal phase, which means we have to be even more strategic about not skipping meals, about adding in some extra meals, about making sure we're having the protein, fiber, healthy fat with our meal combination, which if you haven't already downloaded my free training, how to create hormone balanced meals, I mean, it's a game changer. It's a training I took straight from the mind your hormones about that. It's totally free. Download that. It's in the show notes as well. Um, that needs to be in place for your luteal phase. It needs to be in place always that training, but I'm saying for sure in your luteal phase, to help with these progesterone levels. So number one, head to episode 123 of the podcast. Make sure you know how to track your cervical mucus and your basal body temperature. If you are not regularly ovulating, work with someone. If it's not me, great. Work with anybody who's going to help support you in this. If it is, check out the Mind Your Hormones Method so we can get you ovulating. Number two is to, if you know that you're ovulating, then make sure that you're working on your caffeine and no high intensity exercise in your luteal phase. And make sure you're watching that training of how to create hormone balanced meals so that you have that unlock in every phase of your cycle, but definitely in your luteal phase for sure. Um, but literally always, 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 always doesn't matter where you are in your cycle, whether you're pregnant, whether you're not pregnant, it doesn't matter. Okay. We need to be having blood sugar balancing meals. So that is that for today's episode. I feel like I just talked a mile a minute. Um, I don't even have caffeine. Okay. Imagine if I did have caffeine and I imagine how fast I would talk if I literally consumed caffeine. I, I feel like I wouldn't, wouldn't even be able to get the words out as quickly as my brain wants me to. Um, again, thank you so much for being part of this community and just like, oh, I'm just obsessed with it so much. Remember to go to Instagram. The link will be in the show notes to enter the giveaway. I cannot wait to gift five of you a call with me, the Mind Your Hormones Method, my Supple Master Class. There's going to be so many different things that you could win for this giveaway. And I'm just so freaking excited for it. I love you so much. I'm so grateful for you. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and I will talk to you soon.